So I got the XP machine back out again, and that's because we're going to be upgrading it. And we're also going to be downgrading it. Sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I do have my reasons. So the main upgrade we're going to be doing today is swapping out that copper Zalman cooler for one that will hopefully be better. Now the Zalman cooler isn't bad, it's a pretty good cooler for the time period, just that uh, the Core 2 Extreme is just a little bit too hot for it. There's just not enough headroom to be able to overclock the Core 2 Extreme that's in here, and it was kind of the whole reason that I got the Core 2 Extreme was so I'd be able to easily overclock it. You know, that's a 130 watt chip, and especially if I'm going to overclock it and increase the voltage, the temps are just going to shoot right through the roof, so it's just not viable to keep that on there. Especially since, you know, I want to overclock it. It was the whole reason I got the Core 2 Extreme was to overclock it. So we're going to be swapping in a Hyper 212 Black, which I'm sure some of you are thinking, wait, that doesn't support LGA 775. It, it doesn't say it anywhere on the box. It doesn't say it anywhere on uh, any of the store pages. How's that going to work? Well, believe it or not, this actually does support LGA 775. It actually says it in the manual, which is really weird. I didn't think it did either, because I have a older Hyper 212 Evo that's probably like four years old, and that doesn't support 775. At least, I don't think it does. It, ne it never mentions it at all. And if you look online, you'll probably see a lot of people say that the Hyper 212 just doesn't support LGA 775. But in the manual of this, and I've tested this on a motherboard just to make sure, so I didn't have to disassemble all this first and find out, oh, it's not going to work. But it actually does mount up just fine to a 775 motherboard. So we're going to be using this. Now, at first glance, it might not seem like there's all that much more mass to this Hyper 212 Black compared to the Zalman cooler that's in there, but that only has three heat pipes. Uh, the 212 has four heat pipes, so that is uh, a significant upgrade. And with its 120 millimeter fan, it's moving a lot more air over the fins. So in theory, this cooler should be a lot better than the Zalman cooler. That thing was never really loud, but this is a Silencio fan, and these things are pretty quiet. It's going to sound kind of out of place compared to all the other fans in the system that are a little loud, but I can tolerate it. So I was actually planning on doing another, I guess, upgrade for the computer, if you want to call it an upgrade, I guess. Now I was actually going to change the case for this. I originally, when I was building the computer, I had thought about getting like a modern case that still had five and a quarter inch bays, but that would have much better airflow and stuff. I decided on this because of uh, the aesthetics and I didn't really want to spend any more money. Until just recently, I actually found this case, brand new old stock. I'm not kidding. Now it's not the cool kind of bluish purple, it's uh, silver. I did cut the tape on the box just to make sure it actually was the case that was pictured on the outside and sure enough, it's this. So I was actually thinking about moving uh, the system over to the brand new case because it's not as scratched up as this one. And since I have to take the whole motherboard out anyways to put on the new cooler for the back plate, I thought yeah, you might as well do it. But I kind of thought about it and I was like, you know, I kind of really like the purple and I can deal with the scratches. I, it kind of adds character, I guess. So I'll figure out something to do with that brand new case. But for now, we're just going to stick with this case. I just thought it was worth bringing up because I just thought it was really funny that I happened to find the exact same case, albeit a different color. but brand new old stock just by pure chance. Was not expecting that, but I thought it was too cool not to share it. <laughs> Since I mentioned that downgrade, uh, the last thing we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be downgrading the power supply from the monstrous AX1200i, that's 1200 watts of power, and we're going to be going down to the 650 watt power supply that I originally wanted to use with this computer. And you're probably wondering, wait, 650 watts, that's that's not really enough to cover all this, is it? And it's not, and that's because I'm actually going to be taking out the second 8800 GTX. Here's my thought on that. I'm actually really pleased with the SLI setup. You know, you hear all these problems about SLI and all the micro stuttering, and I did see that in uh, some games, uh, but other games were like buttery smooth and it had amazing performance. So overall, I don't really have a ton of complaints about like the performance side of the SLI setup other than the CPU 
I think even when I overclock it, it's going to be kind of bottlenecking these cards. Um, I mean, just one of these cards is a monster anyways, which is why I'm going to take out the second one. One of these cards is more than enough for what I want to do with this machine. And as a result, the second card is kind of just sitting there wasting power and creating a bunch of extra heat in a case that doesn't have that great of airflow to begin with. And you know, the temps on these cards were not exactly great. I really just want to take out the second one just because it's just running too hot. I don't like how hot it's running. You know, it's been really cool to have, and maybe if I get a different case for this machine at some point that has much more modern airflow, and I get a different power supply, maybe like an 850 watt, then I might move back to the SLI setup, but as of now, I just don't really need it. The SLI setup is going bye-bye. Will I ever do another SLI setup? I might, just to experiment with. I don't know if I'd ever put it in like a full-on build. And like I said, I might put the second card back in this machine at some point, but probably not until I get a better case. So hopefully I haven't rambled too long. After all, I do have a new heatsink to install and thermal tests to perform, and I'm gonna overclock the CPU to show the performance difference, because, I mean, you gotta. So the heatsink installation went fine. There wasn't really any problems, other than apparently my tube of Arctic Silver 5 dried up somehow. So I had to use MX4 instead, but otherwise it went smoothly. And upon booting it up and running some tests, the temps at stock clock speeds were indeed a fair bit lower, about 10 degrees or so. So now that I finally had enough headroom, I decided to overclock it. And I managed to get it up to 3.2 gigahertz. Uh, I could push it farther if I wanted to overclock the front side bus, but uh, I was just increasing the multiplier and 3.2 is kind of where I felt comfortable leaving it. The one thing about it though is that I had to leave the voltage on auto. For some reason when I'd set a specific voltage in the BIOS, uh, upon booting the computer the voltage would drop off significantly, and especially when you put load on it, it would drop like a lot. and thus would make the system crash because it doesn't have the voltage it needs to maintain those clock speeds. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but leaving the voltage at auto seems to be stable and it's not putting the voltage over like 1.325 volts, which is about where I was going to put the voltage anyways for the overclock. So it seems to be working fine. So I would have preferred to not use auto, but it seems to be working fine, it's stable, and the temps never got above 80 degrees Celsius. And that's with like a full-on Prime 95 all-core workload, so I'd consider that pretty acceptable. And of course, because you have to run a before and after benchmark, here's some Cinebench 2003 scores. So yeah, a pretty nice increase in performance, I'm finally glad I got to overclock this thing. So all the upgrades and technically downgrades went all according to plan. For once. Yeah, not only is the heatsink uh, a thermal improvement, I really do think it's an aesthetic improvement as well. An all-black heatsink against an all-black motherboard with a black graphics card and black sound card, I think it makes the system look really nice. And while the copper cooler is technically more period accurate for aesthetics, I guess you could say, there's just something about it that just looks so correct. <laughs> And I've been messing around with just the one graphics card for about a week now, and while the performance is lower, I don't think the experience is really any worse than with two cards. So while the SLI setup was cool, but I really do think that just the one GPU for now, in this particular case, is probably for the best. Now it's not to say that I wouldn't want to revisit the SLI setup at some point in the future. When I do that, it'll probably be with a case that has much better airflow. And of course, a power supply that isn't totally overkill. Probably would also upgrade the uh, dinky little SLI bridge that I have. Probably get a hard one. So yeah, that's pretty much it for what's going on with the XP machine for the moment. We upgraded the thermals, we upgraded the performance, and we upgraded the, uh, the noise level too, because only having one GPU in there does make the system a lot quieter. Plus, uh, the fan on the Hyper 212 is a little bit quieter than the Zalman. So finally, for once, everything went pretty much how I wanted to, other than not being able to overclock the CPU quite as high as I want, but still 3.2 gigahertz is nothing to shake a stick at. Oh yeah, and one last thing. Uh, I finally replaced the uh, temporary zip drive uh, with a floppy drive. Oops. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with the zip drive, but uh, 
floppies are a lot more useful to me than uh, zip disks. Am I ever practically going to use the floppy drive on here? No, but if I have the machine set up and I need to write like a floppy image or something, it it's probably more convenient than pulling out like an external USB drive. So that's going to do it for this video. There's really not much else I want to do with this machine. There's a couple like minor things I might mess with, but I don't know if they'd be uh, really worth making a video about. About the only thing left I really want to do is have a better case with better airflow. And I mean, even if I never get that, I'm still pretty happy with the result I have at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, pretty simple upgrade video. This is definitely not the last time you're going to see the XP machine on the channel, because I do have a lot of software stuff planned for it, uh, potentially with OSs that are not XP related, which brings in a question, is it still an XP machine at that point? Well, yeah, it is. I'm still just going to call it the XP machine, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching the video. Have a good day, and goodbye.